Welcome to the part 7 of Lung Function Test Series from Pulmonology Read Aloud. I am Dr. Ansham and today we will be concluding this series on quick lung function testing. In case you are seeing this video for the first time, do check out our previous videos on various lung function tests. So today we will be talking about DLCO testing or diffusion studies also known as diffusion capacity of carbon monoxide now really this name is actually a misnomer here we are not trying to test the diffusing capacity of carbon monoxide we are using carbon monoxide to check the limitation in diffusion so it ideally should be called as diffusion limited carbon monoxide or or the better name is transfer factor. So transfer factor carbon monoxide TLCO or diffusion capacity as it's called carbon monoxide. Now basically to understand what diffusion test is, we need to understand the basic unit of the alveoli, the alveolar basement membrane. Now this is the membrane with alveolar capillary basement membrane interface where all the diffusion of the gases takes place. Now you know that when we inhale the oxygen is transferred through the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries and carbon dioxide diffuses out. This exchange takes place in this small unit which is the alveolar capillary basement membrane and this is the layers that the oxygen has to cross. So basically when you start inhaling and the air enters, it has to cross these layers of the epithelium, the alveolar epithelium, which consists of type 1 pneumocytes. Then it has to undergo the basement membrane, the epithelial basement membrane that is. Then it reaches the interstitial space, the interstitium, then followed by now the capillaries, so the capillary endothelium and then it traverses across to the red cell and the RBC at this level, the exchange takes place. So anything that is going to happen in this zone, so away from the airways into the alveoli and between the alveoli and the capillaries is where this problem will be detected. So diffusion will help us diagnose diseases of this unit. So why are we using carbon monoxide here? So we use carbon monoxide here because we actually need something that can be a good surrogate for the transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide across the airway, across the alveoli. So we need something that is easy to diffuse. And we know that carbon monoxide dissolves very easily and has a very high affinity for hemoglobin. So we use that affinity and we use carbon monoxide because it will continue to diffuse and diffuse and will not instantly equilibrate so, so that we are able to estimate it. So the rate of diffusion of carbon monoxide will be fast but will continue to, to uh, diffuse. Also, carbon monoxide does not affect the pressure in the plasma. So since it does not do that, so there is no change in pressure gradient. And thirdly, Carbon monoxide has a low solubility in the pulmonary capillary membranes. So the estimation can be done more easily. Right. Now, what will affect any report of DLCO? So since we're using carbon monoxide, it definitely depends on the gas, but it also depends on a lot of other values. So if you look at it, again, remember that it is depending on the membrane. So the basement membrane, it's depending on the interstitium. It's also depending on endothelium, the driving pressure across this membrane. It's also dependent on the hemoglobin or the red blood cell and so it also depends on the flow of blood here. So all these factors, whether the epithelium gets thickened or the basement membrane gets thickened or the uh, capillary blood, the endothelium changes, the surface area for exchange changes, the pressure changes, uh, that would affect what the DLCO report would look like. So now this test follows the fixed law and the fixed law says that the rate of diffusion of a gas depends on the area of exchange, the pressure and the surface available 
and it is inversely proportional to the thickness and the molecular weight of the gas. So here it will be inversely proportional to the thickness. So for example, in a case of pulmonary edema or ILD, when the thickness would increase, the DLCO shall decrease and it's directly proportional to the surface area. So if you have a patient who has emphysema, the surface area decreases and so the diffusion may also decrease. So all of these, the, whether it's alveolar destruction in emphysema or it's the thickness of the uh, basement membrane in ILDs, it would get affected. And what will also affect is the hemoglobin because we know that abnormal hemoglobin levels can also affect the diffusing capacity. And here, since we're using carbon monoxide, which produces carbon carboxyhemoglobin, so if a patient already has an elevated carboxyhemoglobin, it will not only reduce the pressure gradient for the carbon monoxide which is coming, and it will also hold on, this carbon monoxide will hold on to the sites of hemoglobin which could have been used for binding the carbon monoxide in testing. So if anybody has high carboxyhemoglobin, it will affect the test. So this is what affects the DLCO report. Now normally, the uh, diffusion of uh, oxygen across this alveolar capillary membrane is 250 ml per minute because it's estimated that for every one millimeter Hg pressure, the diffusion is 23 to 25 milliliters of oxygen. So normal is around 250 mils per minute for 11 mm Hg alveolar arterial gradient. So this serves as our normal value and then we can compare the values on testing. We also need to adjust for the hemoglobin as I said because it's a very very important factor and these adjustments are done automatically by the machine when it calculates. Now why are we using this variable called DLCO or TLCO because it's a very sensitive indicator of dyspnea. So whenever your pulmonary function testing or whenever your uh, functional residual capacity and TLC measurements do not give you information about the diffusion of gases, we may want to do a DLCO testing. So we want to still know what is the cause of dyspnea, is it restrictive lung or is it emphysema. We might want to use it to screen for ILDs, to screen for organ transplant failures, in patients with occupational lung disease to detect early subtle changes or to follow up our patients who are on ILD treatment, who have IPF or patients who've had lung resection. So DLCO testing gives us a whole lot of information in these scenarios. So what is the test exactly? Now the test actually consists of various techniques including the multiple breath technique but the technique that is most commonly used worldwide is the single breath technique. So the single breath technique for carbon monoxide uptake in the lung is a validated test that is commonly performed. What is used is a gas mixture which is called the DLCO gas mixture. So this gas mixture can contain um, helium, 10% helium and 0.3% methane or argon as I said. It contains 0.3% of carbon monoxide. It contains 21% oxygen and the remainder is nitrogen. So that is the test mixture. The DLCO gas mixture is either helium, methane, argon, etc. inert gases. It does contain 0.3% carbon monoxide, 21% oxygen or the remainder nitrogen. So this is how the test is done. So when we perform the test, we first ask the patient to take tidal breathing. So once the patient starts taking tidal breaths, after that, he's asked to have an unforced expiration. So patient will have an unforced expiration to his residual volume. Once he achieves that, at this point, the mouthpiece is connected to the test gas and the patient is asked to now inhale to his total lung capacity. So whenever the patient inhales to the total lung capacity, he's also inhaling the gas mixture. And then he will hold his breath for around 10 seconds and then he's going to exhale out. And when he exhales out, that is what is measured in the analyzer. So the exhale breath, the initial part around 0.7 to 1 liter 
of the exhalate is discarded because that's coming from the dead space, that's coming from the mouthpiece, from the filter, from the equipment that's measuring and from the anatomical areas where there's no gas exchange. And the rest of it will be our sample that will be analyzed. And this sample analyzed will tell us that what was the exhaled carbon monoxide, so what was the uptake of carbon monoxide. And the rate of diffusion of this carbon monoxide will then be estimated by seeing this change from the initial alveolar concentration to that of the expired grab sample. And this change in the carbon monoxide concentration will then be multiplied by a single breath estimate of the total lung capacity and that will give us what is called as the diffusing capacity. Now, since we are measuring something where we are involving a breath hold, we are asking the patient to inspire and expire completely, we will not do eight tests as permitted in a spirometry. So here we restrict to almost five tests. And in between these tests also, you would want to wait for at least four minutes. Another thing that's very important is that the patient will be asked not to smoke for 24 hours because that would affect the carboxyl hemoglobin and it will also is important to stop oxygen if you if this patient is on oxygen at least 15 minutes before to avoid false readings and if you're performing all of these tests then you would first perform a spirometry then you would do a lung volume estimation then you will do a post bronchodilator test and then you would do a DLC because you want the patient to have an optimum uh, FVC more than a liter before you go for the DLCO and then you would do the post bronchodilator if needed. So do a spirometry, do a lung volume if you're doing everything. Then you give the bronchodilator, then you do the DLCO and then you check for the post bronchodilator spirometry. So this, these are the calculations. Thankfully, they're all calculated internally by the system. There's a new calculation, DLNO by DLCO ratio which involves nitric oxide, and I'll just briefly tell the importance of it. But basically, we are using DLCO, which is the equivalent of multiplication of KCO on the alveolar transfer of carbon monoxide, which is the same as your DLCO by, by VA, alveolar volume. So what are the conditions where this KCO or transfer coefficient may vary? So now, uh, the trans, we clearly understand that DLCO is a multiplication of alveolar volume VA into DLCO. And once you know the TLC and the FRC, you are deriving the alveolar volume. So now to estimate DLCO, we are using KCO or the transfer coefficient. So if there is a reduction in transfer coefficient or there is a reduction in alveolar volume, in both the cases, DLCO will come low. So either of it goes low or both of it goes low, the DLCO will come low. So now what are the conditions where KCO may come low? So the transfer coefficient may come low when there is a parenchymal disease, such as an ILD, or there's a vascular disease, as we said, or there's a shunting of the blood, or there's a severe obstruction. And when would this coefficient come high, where there is a restriction because of an extra parenchymal effect, then it will not go low. Or there is an extra hemoglobin, so there's more hemoglobin. So these are the factors which will affect the case here, the transfer factor, transfer coefficient, and the alveolar volume or the total volume in the lungs will then be multiplied to this to get the DLCO. So what is the interpretation? A normal DLCO will be one, which is more than the lower limit of normal for a patient. A mild Reduced DLCO will be one where it's 60% to lower limit of normal. A moderate would be 40 to 60 and a severe will be less than 40%. These are some of the patterns that you may see. So for example, if you are dealing with a patient of ILD with lung fibrosis, we know that we are expecting a reduced DLCO. And why is that happening? Because the alveolar volume is reducing and so is the diffusion factor. So here, because of a nor or slightly reduced KCO, or sometimes early on it may also be normal KCO, but the alveolar volume goes down. Due to alveolitis, you will have a reduced DLCO. If a patient has a neuromuscular disease, so here again the DLCO will reduce, but here the alveolar volume is the one that is becoming low because of lack of alveolar expansion, but the KCO, the transfer coefficient may stay, in, stay high. In a patient with pulmonary vascular diseases, you will get a reduced DLCO, 
because one, the transfer is affected, so the KCO goes low, but here the alveolar volume will remain normal. And in lung resection, the TLCO will come reduced because there will be a reduction in alveolar volume because the alveolar units are lost and sometimes the transfer coefficient may be normal but sometimes it may also be high because all of the blood is recruited to the available alveolar. Just one mention before I conclude the video, the DLNO DLCO ratio is a new indices which we use with nitric oxide which is coming up now where you can distinguish whether the reduction is because of the restriction or it's because of a vascular abnormality. So this is something which is going to come up new. Stay tuned to more videos in my PFT series. Watch out for more content. Uh, we'll be concluding this PFT series now. And please subscribe, like and share my channel. Thank you.